Welcome back to Black News Tonight. Now, few figures in culture are seen as icons and not as big as Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. And a new feature film, well, it's a documentary, is putting a brand new twist on this that you may never have seen before. Before It's on Netflix and it's exploring their special friendship. Take a look. They had the student-teacher relationship. My father wanted to be great. And there are things that Malcolm taught him that my father kept with him until his last day. But there were these outside forces that prevented them from continuing this beautiful relationship. ...with candid interviews with family members and friends, as well as never-before-seen footage. Blood Brothers takes us back to three crucial years when Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X forged a deep bond that changed both men and the world around them. But it also was almost an inevitable fracture of their same friendship that still haunts many who are invested in uplifting black people across the globe. So joining me now is Marcus A. Clark, the director and executive producer of Blood Brothers. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's uh, good to be here today to talk about the film. Yeah, I got to tell you, this film is just outstanding from the footage to the commentary to the experts you have talking and the things you bring out on, in the family. It is amazing, and you can see it several times and still not catch some of the nuances in it. So can, for those who haven't seen this, tell us a little bit about the genesis of this film and going from the book to this Netflix documentary. Yeah, of course. Well, um, Kenya Barris and Lightbox, a uh, production company here in L.A., they bought the rights to the book, Blood Brothers, written by Randy Roberts and Johnny Smith. And so, you know, I kind of came to the table with my POV, my perspective for how I would approach a story like this. Um, and that really centered around this regret element that Muhammad Ali expressed in his book, Soul of a Butterfly, uh, that his greatest regret was actually turning his back on Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. And so through that regret and kind of like a, a redemption story, if you will, um, is how we really approached the process and kind of getting into this film. Um, you know, not a lot of people know about this relationship. It was a very private relationship. It was very brief. Uh, it was very potent uh, between 1962 and 65, and it really changed the trajectory of history. Wow. What would you say was your most shocking or surprising interview or comment in the doc? Um, well, I'm going to have to go with uh, Rahman Ali, Muhammad mm -hmm. Ali's brother, is in the doc. Um, incredibly uh, precious interview, uh, genuine and authentic. And, you know, Rahman is one of the closest people to Muhammad Ali. And as I mentioned, you know, this is a very private relationship. And when you watch the film, um, you see his brother next to him at every step of the way at the United Nations. Um, at every point in Ali's journey, his brother's right there and sometimes right in between him and Malcolm. And so it really gives us uh, as close as we can as an insight, as a window into what this relationship was really about. Uh, about the admiration both men had for each other mm. and really the core of, of the bond between the two men. Yeah. Now, sidebar, is it true that you were named after legendary black nationalist and pan-Africanist Marcus Garvey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm oh, of Jamaican cool. descent. Both my parents were born in Jamaica. Uh, I was named after Marcus Garvey. And, you know, for those who've seen the film and those who've yet to see the film, you knew where I was going. Um, we've <laughs> elevated that part of the legacy. Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. Because <laughs> you actually had Garvey's son as one of the interviews in the film. So I guess that brings me to how does your personal upbringing and your life impact the way you brought this whole story together? Yeah, well, you know, working with Kenya Barris, he really challenged me and pushed me to uh, infuse some of my culture, some of my heritage into the film um, in a way that was natural and authentic and organic. And, you know, that influence was already there. Malcolm X's parents are part of the Garvey movement. His mother was a writer for Garvey's newspaper. And if you connect the dots of history, you know, in the last chapters of Malcolm X's life, um, he's very much carrying the mantle of Marcus Garvey, trying to connect black and brown people in America, in the Caribbean, and in Africa, and get the world to understand that we're really facing the same struggle. So, mm. you know, as, as that being kind of part of my connection, I wanted to make sure that that um, that connection to Malcolm and his story um, was amplified and was prominent. All right, well, I want to play a clip from the film right now, and then I want to ask you two questions on the other side. Let's take a look. Did your brother like being around Malcolm? Love, 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 my brother. I do, too. Why do you think they stopped being friends? Well, uh... Destiny can take your best friend as an instrument to cause you harm and your worst enemy to do you good, right? Judas betrayed Jesus, Malcolm X betrayed Elijah Muhammad. 
Uh, so again, you talk about his brother being by his side at all moments. And not only his brother, you also interviewed both men's daughters in the film. How was it interviewing and connecting with the family members, especially given that this was a very sensitive subject for a lot of them? Yeah, very sensitive, um, but it was incredible and it was really important to me uh, to get the voice of the family and to get the next of kin, to get the actual blood, literally, um, in the film to speak about these men. You know, sometimes we think about experts as just historians and scholars, um, but the family is also, they're experts, you know, they're experts mm -hmm. in the legacy um, and in the intention and, and what these guys were really about. And so that was really important to me and that was a, uh, definitely a process. Uh, Ilyasa Shabazz is in the film, Maryam Ali is in the film, Hana Ali is in the film. Um, and going through that, you know, we, we did have to kind of court them into the process, um, let them know our intentions, um, where we come from, who we are, um, and what we wanted to do with this film. And I think after that process, um, they, they opened up to us and they shared um, some of the new information that's in the film, which I think is going to be uh, revealing and also shocking to some people that later on in Muhammad Ali's life, you know, he reaches out to the children of Malcolm X, to, to Atala Shabazz and Ilyasa Shabazz, and forms his own, you know, bond and relationship with them, um, kind of as a symbolic gesture, mm. uh, underscoring the, re the remorse and the redemption that I think he was dealing with at that time. Yeah, now this next question may be my own conspiracy theory, but uh, <laughs> I want to know from you, um, it's about how Muhammad Ali actually broke off his relationship with Malcolm X, and we all know that the boxing world is very, it has a shady side, if you will, with betters, with, you know, the mafia mm -hmm. involvement, different things like that, but Ali at the time, he was still pretty young, he was only 20, 21, 22 years old during this time frame, so... Would it be at all possible that he had to break off his relationship with Malcolm X because he needed to keep the support and safety that the NOI and the FOI were providing for him at that time? I mean, just your thoughts. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's that's definitely a possibility. Um, you can't dismiss that possibility. There, there's definitely elements of, you know, survival uh, at hand. And but I don't want people to lose that. You know, like you mentioned, he's in his early twenties. And so there's a lot of dynamics in the relationship, yeah. um, in the kind of the, the, the social and political climate mm -hmm. um, within the nation. And then, of course, both men are under surveillance. And so, you know, Malcolm, people forget, was 17 years older than Muhammad Ali. So he had a little bit more wisdom and insight about the world, about the workings of the Nation of Islam. But, you know, for Cassius Clay, for Muhammad Ali, you know, he was in a very, uh, he, was in a, he was in a predicament. He was in a really tough predicament um, between these two very powerful black leaders and, you know, it was a tough decision for a young man to make. But I do think um, you're, you're on to something. There's definitely a, a survival element that could have played a role. Um, and as you mentioned, at that time, in particular in the 60s, boxing was run by the mob mm -hmm. and the mafia. And so he was one of the few boxers that managed to kind of sidestep um, that influence. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if the kind of the support of the nation allowed him to, to move so freely. At the end of the day, I just think they were too powerful to be together, and that's what it was. But that's just my view. Uh, before I let you go, I have to ask you what you're working on next, because after this, I mean, the sky's the limit. I can't wait to see what it is. What are some of the topics you want to <laughs> tackle next? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not really sure what's next, um, but I'm, I'm taking the calls. I'm having the conversations, uh, but nothing I can really speak on yet. But, you know putting these types of messages together, uh, connecting the breadcrumbs of history, mm -hmm. that's something that's really you know, important to me, something I'm passionate about. And if I can use my talents and skills as a filmmaker um, to entertain people, but also to educate and to inform um, the next generation, my generation, generations above me, um, that's really what I'm passionate about. All right, well, we hope you never stop doing it because you're doing it great. Thank you so much, Marcus, for joining us. And Blood Brothers is now playing on Netflix. Make sure you check it out and then let us know what you think about it. And hopefully he'll come back and tell us about his next projects when they happen too. All right, up next in these digital streets. Plus, a CBS has announced that there's a change coming up to a series, The Activist. Stay tuned and find out what that is on Black News Tonight.